Hey folks, Jerry Stevenson, Chief Redneck in Charge at the Redneck Barbecue Lab, McGee's Cross Road in Benson, North Carolina. Here in RBL Studios again today to show you guys how to smoke salmon at home just like I do at mine. So before we get started with that recipe and how to, love for you guys to subscribe to this channel and click on that bell button down there so you're notified about this video and other videos when they come online first. Like this video, please share it with your friends. We're doing this for you guys, just trying to share a little bit of love, a little bit of inspiration to get out and cook with your friends, your family, your significant other, and basically just to show some love back to you guys, all the love you show to us in the restaurant. As always, please leave us your comments and suggestions as to what you thought about this video and to what other types of food you would like to see us cook here in the RBL studios. So let's hop right into it. Um, salmon's one of the things that I really didn't grow up on cooking either, and that's one of the things that, like I said, that's it's, it's inspired me is my travels, my talking with people, my sharing meals with people in different places and cultures and stuff that uh, I normally didn't have when I was growing up. I was blessed to be able to grow up in a military town where there was a lot of different stuff going on, a lot of different cultures and stuff, but I never really had a lot of food that I didn't find until later on in life, and salmon was one of them. To me, salmon was something that came in a can that my mother made into salmon croquettes and potato soup. That's one of my favorite meals of all time. And I know it gets downplayed as, well, that's not real salmon. That's something shoved in a can. Well, you know, that was one of the things back in the days. That was like a poor man's supper, basically what my mom kind of called it was. It was something that was high uh, with a lot of essential oils that were really good for you, the beneficial oils, um, the beneficial fats that helped us um, to stay healthy. And it was something that was preserved that we could keep at, on the shelf at any time. We could just pull it out. That was, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, but it was decades ago when this was going on. And now we're blessed with the ability to get fresh salmon brought to us basically overnight. So they can catch this and bring it to us overnight. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys and say that this was caught on a boat yesterday somewhere out in the Bering Sea by some fisherman named Swin, because it wasn't. This was purchased locally at a mega market type store who uh, is a, a wholesaler, well, they're a retailer of meats, but they sell quality stuff. And uh, that's one of the things that I'm not scared of buying from them because of their reputation and the fact that I know it's consistent and it's sourced uh, in the right spots and that the, uh, the meat will be good. So whenever you're buying a piece of salmon like this, because it is kind of expensive, always make sure you know who you're getting your purveyor from, who's your purveyor, where they're getting it from, and, and basically have some trust with them. If you don't, what you want to look for in a piece of salmon is, is as you can see with this right here, you can see these striations in here. These striations here, that's the fat. That's where a lot of those omega fats and the good stuff is located and where the flavor is at in this meat. Tend to be towards the tail right here. You'll see it kind of doesn't have that much and the tail will have less taste to it. So anyway, that's just uh, one of the things. And the other thing that I love doing too is just just smelling it, I always do, and it's not a fetish or anything like that. It's just smelling it to make sure that it smells like the ocean, not really so much like fish or some other thing, but uh, that it, it, it smells like the ocean. Um, before we start preparing this, uh, one of the things I do is I like to run my hands down it. There's a bunch of bones where this was, the rib cage where this was separated from. The belly part was down here. And right here, there's a lot of bones in here sometimes. And that can be, get caught. They're, they're, they're not like a pinfish bone like you would get in a croaker or a spot. But they can be bad for you or bad for your kids and kind of be off-putting. I didn't feel any in this. So we're going to go ahead and start preparing this uh, smoked salmon. If you're familiar with our YouTube channel, which I hope you are by now, you guys know that I have done a video like this in the, in the past. Um, a buddy of mine uh, named Matt, aka Special, was the one who got me turned on to this. He's like, I don't think there's a fish we can't smoke. Mullet, herring, bluefish. Um, and salmon. And this was one of the recipes that he said, hey, you got to try this. And, and I did. And I really loved it. And if you go to our YouTube channel down here, you could probably see uh, that old video and well, probably me with hair and stuff like that. But here is kind of this new and improved version that, that, that I'm doing with this salmon. And it kind of goes a little something like this. So first thing we want to do is, is we are going to take some sesame oil. Um, 
like I said, I grew up with this. It was an Asian market in Jacksonville. We could find this. Um, but now we can find this readily in any supermarket shelf. Uh, they have what's called an international aisle a lot of times, and you can find it. Um, this stuff is made from uh, sesame seeds. It's very potent. I mean, you can smell it. It smells like sesame seeds, but it is very, very potent stuff. It, um, it, it, it can, a little goes a long ways, especially if you're making a salad. Um, do as I say, don't as I do. Don't uh, pull the top off of it, kind of like I did. Be very careful with it. But you can definitely see it's kind of thick. Um, I'm going to put that into a bowl. It's probably about a teaspoon is about all I'll need. Uh, to that, this is some fresh squeezed uh, lemon juice, you know, that I went and handpicked off the tree. And uh, it's organic. And I, you know, cultivated it myself by climbing the ladder and getting it and rolling it, you know, out to make sure I squeezed all the juice out of the the skin and stuff, um, it, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's that lemon juice that I use. Um, this is the squirt bottle. So this is a little bit of squirt bottle lemon juice. I'll be honest with you, when I like to season my fried fish and stuff like that, nothing beats, you know, a piece of seafood with that fresh squeezed lemon on it. When I cook, <laughs> that's fresh squeezed lemon and the processed lemon, I can't tell the difference, you know, maybe a wine sommelier can, but not, not Jerry Stevenson, um, AKA the cook. I'm just going to kind of mix this stuff together, um, and make a little emulsion. Basically you could turn around and put this onto a salad, um, or a piece of chicken or something like that as well. But today we're going to use this on that salmon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a pretty good coating of this. Um, like I said, this stuff's pretty uh, pretty potent, but it's downright tasty when you uh, when you cook with it. There, Mr. Demille, I think this salmon's ready for its close-up. Um, so we've got that on it, and if you're following recipes and stuff like that, I'll be more than happy if you guys shoot us an email. Um, or drop something down here in these comments, you know, here on this YouTube channel about the ratios that I use. I don't often cook um, with teaspoons and stuff like that. I, I cook with grams. So if you really want recipes, a lot of times it'll be grams and stuff like that, even the water, X amount of grams of water versus a cup. But um, just like I said, I'm just kind of showing you guys the technique and stuff. You need a recipe or something I can help you out with later, I will. Um, once we've got that on there, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some light brown sugar um, just kind of coating it with that, sprinkling it. Man, you can smell this, this lemon and the sesame oil is just like, whoo, man, it smells good. Oftentimes I've just wondered what that lemon and uh, sesame oil would, would do on some grilled vegetables like uh, asparagus or something like that. I think it'd be really good, really tasty. I have to try that. Let's leave that down there, like I said. Leave it in the suggestions part, and who knows, maybe you'll see that later. You'll see that pop right back up. Now that I've got that on, I'm going to go ahead and put some of our rub on it. Our old recipe, we used uh, chili powder. Chili powder was good, but I think when I changed and went to our Redneck Barbecue Lab, the rib and chicken rub, it was a whole lot better. This is the rib and chicken rub that we use in competition. This is the one that we use in our... Um, in the lab at McGee's Crossroad. It's the one we've won world championships in chicken with and uh, perfect scores at the American Royal and ribs with. And uh, world we won a world championship in a rub competition with it as well. So confidence wise, I can just say I love it and a lot of other people love it. And I found that I like it too on fish just like I do on my competition chicken and my ribs. So we're gonna put that on there. So that's like a little deviation of uh, the old recipe. Now this may appear like I'm laying it on thick. I'm giving it what I call a medium coat. I'm covering the meat, but I'm not leaving a big thick layer on it. A lot of this is going to melt off, and I mean melt off as the proteins seep out of this piece of salmon. And this brown sugar is going to melt off as well. It's gonna basically kind of create a glaze on this salmon. And um, 
you guys hear me all the time, you know, previous, the videos that we, that we do before you've seen, obviously, since you subscribe to this channel, right? And you've shared it with your friends and you like it. You guys know I talk about how the science of cooking is very important to me and how it relates to cooking and uh, making something great that may have just been good just if you just gave it a little bit of time and patience. This is one of those times I want to ask you for a little bit of time and patience too. We're going to let this sit for just a little bit. And before you jump on the spoil train, botulism train and everything else, rest assured this came out of the refrigerator. The refrigerator was at 38 degrees. It sat out here for about approximately an hour. The internal temperature of this, if I have my thermoprobe, is probably somewhere just above the 40s. According to the North Carolina Health Code, we have up to four hours to do something with this. And we are going to do something with this. We're going to put it into a smoker at 275 degrees with a blend of cherry, hickory, and maple, and we're gonna make something beautiful and tasty, I hope. So, let's let this sit probably about 15, 20 minutes. Then we're gonna, you guys are gonna see me downstairs in a little bit, uh, putting this on the smoker, and uh, telling you a bit, a little bit more about what we're gonna do down there. So, give me about 15 or 20 minutes, we'll be right back with you. All right, we're outside. Uh, we've got our Traeger grill rocking with some uh, cherry, hickory, and maple blend pellets in it. Show you guys that a little bit. First thing I want to show you though is what we're doing. This is that salmon that we prepared for you earlier here. Uh, we started out with, we made that salad dressing out of sesame oil and lemon juice, coated it on there, put some brown sugar, and then over the top of that, we put our Redneck Barbecue Lab chicken and rib one, uh, chicken and rib rub world championship chicken and rib rub. On top of it, we let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes and you can kind of see how it's kind of melted and it's starting to glisten. You could, that's what you want to see. That's when some of the water and proteins have come out of the meat and that salt and sugar have all kind of combined it on there. This, when it hits this 275 degree Traeger is going to kind of create a glaze on top of this that will set and form a pellicle. That pellicle is kind of impenetrable where we'll get some smoke on top of it, but it's not gonna allow for moisture to come out. So uh, let's go ahead and get this in there. Um, we're gonna cook this to an internal temperature of 140 degrees. Uh, we're gonna pull it. What we're looking for for a finished temperature on this is 145 degrees to 150 degrees. Um, don't worry if you're a little bit under, you don't wanna be over with this. That's the pro tip I'm gonna give you with fish. The texture of it, it will be a little mushy but if you cook it over, it's gonna be dry and flaky and it'll taste like you're eating um, wood chips. So please, if you do go anything on fish, shoot for under versus over. Um, we, like I said, we are using our Traeger grill today. Uh, it's really simple to operate. Uh, one I like using at home gets a bad rep because it's too easy to use. It doesn't taste like wood and smoke and stuff. And I'm here to tell you, yeah, it does, it's fine. Um, you just basically cut the power on you set your settings anywhere from 180 degrees to this one will go up to a high of 375. Uh, load it up with pellets. Um, this is that pellet that I was telling you about. It's a cherry, hickory, and maple blend pellet. Uh, the smoker just kind of feeds it in there to regulate the temperature. It'll cycle anywhere between 255 to 280 degrees, kind of go back and forth and stuff like that. And that's fine, folks. It's not like your oven has to stick right there between a degree or two. But uh, let's leave that salmon on there. Um, I'm going to put a probe into this so I do know when I'm approaching that temperature and uh, pull it about 140 degrees. Like I said, we're shooting for internal temperature of about 145. So see that smoke coming out? I can start smelling some of it already starting to cook. I can't wait to uh, show you guys this here shortly. All right, folks, we are back in the RBL studios. Our salmon hit 145 degrees. We pulled it off, we let it sit. Wanted it to cool down. It's kind of important, let your fish cool down a little bit like this. Um, you do it hot, it has a tendency to fall apart, whereas this just kind of sits, kind of comes back together once it cools. 
it smells wonderful. You can smell that sesame oil. You can smell the rub. You can smell a little lemon in there. And it's got this sweetness from the brown sugar that you can see where it's caramelized. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, now that you've done this, well, let's recap what we did. This is a piece of salmon that we had got from a local purveyor. It was a, uh, a supermarket type chain that we had bought a similar product from very consistent, very quality. So make sure you source your salmon from a very uh, uh, quality oriented uh, place. We took the salmon and we coated it in a mixture of about 50% sesame oil and 50% lemon juice. It doesn't have to be fresh squeezed or anything like that. We use it out of the bottle. Uh, my preference is if I'm cooking with it, it can come out of the bottle. If I'm finishing with it, it should be fresh. Um, coated it with that. On top of that, we put some brown sugar, uh, light brown sugar, just kind of sprinkled it over the top. On top of that, last thing that we put, we put our Redneck Barbecue Lab um, chicken and rib rub. This is one we won the world championships with in chicken and, and uh, ribs and our perfect score uh, American Roll and ribs and a world championship in pork with. Um, but you can, you can find this at the uh, www.redneckbarbecuelab.com. Uh, find our sauce right down here. Um, it'll show you where you can uh, find it, a local purveyor and some of the other places that do ship uh, out there to you folks. We put that on last um, as our coating. Let it sit for a little bit so the proteins and the water and the fish start coming out and mixing with the salt and the sugar and the rub creates this like created this little like paste on top. We put it into our Traeger smoker with a hickory uh, cherry maple blend pellet in there at 275. This went about an hour and 10 minutes to hit 145. Temperature is going to vary. Size of your fish, smoker, conditions, all that. I can't really give you a time on this. Just put a thermometer in it or regularly check it with a um, digital thermometer. Don't use a little stick thermometer. It's a little tough. So let it rest a little bit and voila, there we have it. So let's go ahead and tuck into this thing and see how we did. Now, how would you eat this salmon? It's perfectly fine to eat as is like this. We can um, uh, eat it on crackers. We've done it before. Um, one of the ways that I like eating it is on a simple salad. Um, it's one of my summertime favorites. Uh, we leave this in the freezer or refrigerator, excuse me, in the refrigerator and um, put it on a simple salad along with a little uh, soy ginger uh, vinaigrette that kind of goes along with the um, the soy lemon sauce that we've got on this. Add a little bit more of the Redneck Barbecue Lab seasoning on it. Matter of fact, we're gonna, we're gonna try this right now for you guys because I definitely want to see how it is too. And then I'm going to tuck into that. That's going to be lunch. But I really want to see how this fish is. And you can see how it just comes off nice and flaky. Um, it's done. You can see the moisture in this. It's, it's nice and moist. Um, it's the way you want your fish to be. Please don't make cardboard out of this. You'll promise it's well worth the time and effort you put into this. It's also worth the time and the effort to make sure you hit these temperatures right on this. So 145, perfect. Looks like this. Let's see how we did. If I'm judging this in a barbecue competition, you guys have heard my principles before. There should be some heat, there should be some sweet, there should be some salt, and there should be some smoke. I get all three or four of those with this bite that I just took of this, as well as a unami type uh, background on the back, and that's that 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 fish, that um, fatty salmon. It's just really uh, luxurious, like silky type bite. We got to have another one. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> Very happy with that. Now, before I get ugly with this, I just want to tell you guys, this will hold in the refrigerator. I would put it in a Tupperware type bowl, or you can wrap it in cellophane. Just kind of keep the air off of it. Don't leave it in your refrigerator where it can air out for two reasons. One, it, that, that air circulating on this will dry this out and all that moisture you kind of protected in there by cooking it gently and everything will be lost. And the other reason is, uh, your significant other, your spouse, may hate you for the fish aroma that are in there. So just wrap it up, put it into a Tupperware container, and it'll be uh, perfectly fine to have this a day, 
or two, I doubt it lasts a day or two later, in a dish like this, on a hot summer evening, you come home tired from work, make a little salad, have a little of this salmon, and you got the perfect meal. Just need a little adult beverage and a little glass over here that's kind of whitish to go along with this, if you know what I mean. So, I'm Jerry Stevenson. I am the chief redneck in charge at the Redneck Barbecue Lab, McGee's Crossroad, Benson, North Carolina. Coming live today at the RBL Studios, my friend Mike Baker over there. He's the whiz behind this whole production. Event webcasting. Look him up, follow him, like him. Speaking of following him, looking him up and like him. You guys like this video down here on YouTube, please share it with your friends. And I already know your subscribers because I asked you to do that earlier and you, I know you did that and clicked on that bell to let you know when videos like these come out. Leave me your comments as to what you thought about this video. Leave us your suggestions as to what you would like to see us tackle in the future. You know, pretty much we're up to any kind of challenge as long as it's not, you know, line dancing and doing the hokey pokey. Just can't do it, folks. I'm sorry. And don't forget, any of these rubs or spices that you guys find, you can find them at our website right down here, www.theredneckbarbecuelab.com, at Find Our Sauce. You can find the purveyors, merchants around here that help us spread the love, spread our brand out to you guys, make it easier, accessible and stuff. A lot of them on there will do online shipping to our out of state and out of country. We had our first out of country not too long ago. Bless you guys. Um, so you guys could go on there to find these products. Same stuff I use in the competition trail, same stuff I use in my restaurant. It's the same stuff you guys can use at home. So it's been fun, folks. It's time for me to go. Remember, be kind, be patient, smile with one another. Let's pass around. Let's spread this message of positivity. Let's just crush this world, that negative attitude we've got going on, that funk. Crush it with love, crush it with positivity. Till next time, folks, I'm Jerry Stevenson. Love y'all. I am out to go destroy this for lunch. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you.